First up, more than four centuries ago in a remote part of Colombia, a large indigenous civilization called the Tayrona came to an end. The places they once called home were abandoned, lost to the world until four decades ago when one of Tayrona's major cities was discovered. Today, archaeologists are still piecing together the rich and varied history of one of Colombia's oldest cultural sites. America's now correspondent Michelle Begay journeyed into the Sierra Nevada mountain range to find Colombia's lost city. Bueno, te cuento. Pues esa ciudad perdida, lo que, lo que Tairona, lo que vio para hacer, eso es como un sitio, eso es el corazón del mundo de la sierra. ¿Por qué? Porque ellos hicieron mucha la protección de los animales, de sexos, culebras, de los jaguares, el bosque, del agua. Por eso lo, Tairona se hizo un sitio sagrado, es muy importante para nosotros. Once a thriving world inhabited by the Tairona people, Ciudad Perdida, or the lost city in English, was built hundreds of years ago. Today, it's called Tayuna by the indigenous people who inhabit the area. Reaching the lost city will not be easy. We must begin the journey in Santa Marta, Colombia, where 8,000 tourists each year pack a few belongings on a four-wheeler and begin a two-hour drive to Machete Pelao. Our guide on this trip is Santiago Giraldo, an archaeologist and director of the Colombia Heritage Program through the nonprofit organization Global Heritage Fund. Okay, we're going to be beginning our hike today in El Mame, which is Machete Pelao, a small town that we arrived to, which is a trailhead. And we're going to hike in to Alojamiento Alfredo, which is the lodge where we'll be sleeping tonight. On the second day, we'll be walking from Alojamiento Alfredo to Alojamiento Tejumaque and staying the night over there. And then the third day, we arrive at Ciudad Perdida. And the total is 23 kilometers? The total is 23.3 kilometers. So round trip, it'll be 46.6 kilometers. Although the trek into the Sierra Nevada mountain range is not an easy one for most, Santiago Giraldo's extensive work on the field makes him seem like a local as he effortlessly moves around the difficult terrain. The trail to the lost city and the surrounding areas look scarcely populated with small farms sprinkled throughout the land. But 400 years ago, the scenery would have been much different. All, all this area was actually inhabited by uh, Tairona peoples up to around 1600. So really what, what we're walking up is a cultural landscape that was altered and abandoned after 1600. And this is what you're seeing is really pasture and uh, patches of secondary growth forest that is uh, to some extent maybe only 400 years old. As we continue our walk, we enter the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta National Natural Park. This tropical rainforest is home to thousands of varied species. The rich biodiversity is a biologist's dream. Through this trip to the lost city, Arturo Lievano from the Colombian University El Bosque is studying the bee population in the region. We know more about this ecosystem. We can see how the ecosystem works and how the ecosystem affects the people here, how the ecosystem gives us, the people here, a lot of resources, and also uh, how the people interact with the, with the forest. Tourists' interaction with nature is something that makes this trip one of a kind, but it can also become a deterrent for many others who don't want to be so far from civilization. This is something that might work in favor for this ecosystem's protection. And also, this is a uh, very fragile conservation area in general. We've got jaguar populations, we've got ocelot populations, we've got tapir, uh, we've got howler monkeys, we've got all sorts of um, uh, reptiles, we've got any number of birds. There's over 600 species of birds in the area. Um, so what we would like uh, with the indigenous community and with the peasant community is to keep things at a manageable level. 
um, so that they have better livelihoods, but it does not get out of hand. Farmers and indigenous peoples from different ethnic groups live in the area. The most prominent indigenous group, the Kogi. They claim to be the descendants of the original Tairona people. Although they work off of the land they live on, it is important for the Kogi and peasants to participate in alternate forms of income, like sustainable tourism. Santiago Giraldo helps the communities through a foundation he created called Tairona Foundation for Archaeological and Environmental Research, known as FIAT, which administers Colombian and international funds that come in. So we've been doing a, a, a number of projects with the indigenous community and the peasant community. This lodge right here, for example, is owned by the indigenous community. And they've been slowly putting money into it, improving it, doing a number of things, and we've been helping out so that they have their own uh, micro business, micro hotel business, that will give them some money uh, apart from the money that the government gives them.